Hi, I'm Charles Lutenbring, and I'm here at the Alberta College of Art and Design, and this segment is about annealing. So annealing is where we take metal that has been work hardened, and we reset its crystal structure so that you can work it further, i.e. we make it soft again. And uh, so we will be taking a piece of metal and um, heating it to the point that it will be softer after we're done that. Um, in books and in schools, they tend to say that metal is annealed when it's a dull red. Unfortunately, this is a tradition and it comes from a time before electric light when the metal was annealed on a charcoal hearth in an interior room in the dark. And so yeah, um, the color they were referring to was the color of Concord grapes in the dark, a dull purple color. And that means that today, if you see any visible red coming off your metal, you are way too hot. This makes no difference at all for pure metals like copper or pure silver, but for alloys, such as any gold alloy, or for sterling, it can seriously damage the material if you anneal it uh, too much, too high, um, or wrongly. We therefore need other indicators to be able to tell when the metal is annealed, and there are a number of them. Uh, the first one is that we can take a Sharpie marker, and we can put the Sharpie marker onto the metal, and when the Sharpie marker disappears, uh, we have reached annealing temperature. Another one is that we could take uh, ivory soap, that is a bar of soap, and we could rub it onto the metal, and when that turns black, we've reached annealing temperature. Another method is to take a barbecue uh, skewer, that is a piece of wood, and we rub it on the metal while we're heating it, and eventually it will suddenly leave a mark like drawing with charcoal on the material. That is annealing temperature. And uh, we could put borax flux onto it, and then the flux would melt, and that would tell us the annealing temperature, but then we'd have to clean the flux off. So my favorite method is to watch the flame color as it leaves the material, that is, as it bounces off the material. And when we reach annealing temperature, this will turn a bright orange. By the time you notice this, uh, you will have gone up in temperature slightly, and you will be in the very dull red zone of the um, heating process, and the metal will be correctly annealed. At this point, we uh, stop the process by quenching the metal in water, and it's now re-softened, and we can work the material, make it hard, and re-soften over and over again, and this is how you make a bowl or a vase that needs an awful lot of moving and hammering. You just re-soften it when needed. So we're going to be uh, using uh, a piece of metal here. This happens to be copper, but it could be any of the metals that jewelers use. And uh, we're going to be using a striker to light our heat source, which is an acetylene air torch. And I'm going to be using a pair of tweezers so that I don't burn my fingers when I'm moving the metal and dumping it into the water to stop the process. This is the torch I'm going to use, and uh, it's an acetylene air torch. And we might as well begin. I'm going to light the torch and we will anneal this piece of metal here that I've placed onto the brick. Um, a note about the placement. It's on an angle and this is for several reasons. The first is that I don't want the brick to be sucking the heat out of it. That would take longer. And putting it on an angle allows me to bounce the heat behind it, bounce it off the brick and everything goes much faster. The second reason is that if there's any residue, flux residue or other things on the brick, then I won't get that on my metal, and so it keeps it clean. So as we heat this, I would like you to watch over here in the air where the flame is actually leaving the metal, because that will be our indicating place. Light it, and I'm going to begin heating, and I'm going to heat from the bottom upwards so that some of the heat moves up and preheats it. You can see the orange flame is now clear and evident, and that's all I need to see. That's good. I'm now going to quench it, and please note that um, it's now soft, it's ready to go, and that's annealing. And I can repeat this over and over again, that's how simple annealing is, and um, 
what we did was we looked at the material, we set it up in such a way that the uh, bricks or, or reflective material that it was on didn't, didn't suck the heat out, uh, we used a flame, we watched the flame wash over the surface and leave the material, and when that flame turned orange, we were done and we stopped the process by quenching it in water. <laughs>